According to several well-known astrobiologists, we will probably have quite soon either discovered strong evidence for extraterrestrial life or condemned its potential existence to the rapidly expanding but ever-shrinking edges of the cosmos beyond the reach of our observations. By the end of the 2030s, any of a number of projects fervently looking for extraterrestrial life may provide the answers we're looking for. By that time, samples from Mars will have returned to Earth and may even include hard evidence that life ever existed on the Red Planet or currently does. Searches for life will be conducted by spacecraft at Saturn's Titan and Jupiter's Europa, looking for evidence of it either in surface water or in each moon's subsurface ocean. Furthermore, advanced telescopes on the ground and in space should be examining the atmospheres of possibly habitable exoplanets surrounding neighboring stars to see if any of them contain a similar mixture of gases that is conducive to life as our own planet Earth has. In this episode, we are going to take a closer look at what is the real mission of the James Webb Space Telescope in the universe. JWST's primary mission is to answer questions about our place in the cosmos. But what is truly the mission of JWST that NASA is hiding from the public? Let's start unraveling this mystery, and Elon Musk will update us all. Hello everyone, welcome back to Elon Musk Evolution, where we bring you the most recent news about Elon Musk and his multi-billion dollar companies, space news, and the latest science and technology. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our amazing videos. The James Webb Space Telescope, which lifted off on December 25, 2021 at 7.20 a.m. Eastern Time from a vantage point about a million miles from Earth, from the Guiana Space Center in French Guiana is on a mission to observe some of the weakest, oldest objects in the cosmos. The first full-color image taken by JWST, which astronomers described as the deepest view of the universe ever taken, was shared by President Joe Biden on July 11. The following day, NASA released four additional first photographs to demonstrate Webb's extraordinary capability. These images included close-ups of a faraway dying star, an extraterrestrial exoplanet, and a cluster of five galaxies that were chaotically colliding, and a dozen more up to this date. The most sophisticated and expensive telescope ever created is the James Webb Space Telescope. It is commonly referred to as the Hubble Space Telescope's successor, which was launched in 1990. In order to distinguish Webb from Hubble, NASA emphasizes that it is not merely a larger and more powerful telescope. With more than 2.5 times the diameter and 100 times the sensitivity, the JWST is both of those things, but at its core, it is a very different kind of instrument. According to Musk, ordinary optical telescopes view in the same region of the spectrum as our own eyes, encompassing a range of wavelengths between around 380 and 740 nanometers. All of this, as well as a small portion of the ultraviolet at shorter wavelengths and the infrared at longer wavelengths, were covered by Hubble. However, according to NASA's JWST website, the JWST will primarily be an infrared telescope, tuned for 600 to 28,000 nm. It will therefore only be able to perceive orange and red light, as well as a large variety of longer wavelengths beyond that. It won't be able to see green or blue light. These extremely long wavelengths are more helpful to astronomers than the visible spectrum for many celestial objects, such as star-forming regions, exoplanets, and the furthest galaxies. For Earth-based telescopes, though, infrared creates challenges because our planet's atmosphere blocks much of it, according to Musk. Also, the Earth's own infrared emissions from heat radiation tend to overwhelm the weaker astronomical sources. Therefore, the optimal location for an infrared telescope is in space, as far away from the Earth and all of its unpleasant heat sources as possible. The Webb telescope will be situated at the L2 point, roughly 1 million miles from Earth, according to NASA's JWST website, following in the footsteps of ESA's Herschel Infrared Observatory. Webb will have a vision of the universe that is significantly clearer than Hubble's from low Earth orbit as a result of this, but there is a drawback. In contrast to Webb's predecessor, a team of astronauts would need to travel a considerable distance to repair it. One of the reasons it has taken NASA the better part of two decades to prepare Webb for launch is the need that everything must function flawlessly on the first try. After being forced to pause some observations due to a technical issue with its grading wheel, the super-cold camera MIRI on the James Webb Space Telescope is now operating in full science mode. Astronomers can select which wavelengths of light to use to examine the surrounding universe using the grading wheel on the mid-infrared instrument of the medium-resolution spectrometer, 
on the JWST. The mission team was forced to halt observation in the impacted mode in August after the wheel, which is only utilized in one of MIRI's four observing modes, began to exhibit signs of friction. Engineers studied the issue for weeks from a distance and came to the conclusion that increased contact forces between the wheel's central bearing assembly subcomponents under certain conditions were to blame. According to a statement from the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore, which is in charge of running Webb. Well, we are provided with a technical reason for this glitch, but do you think this is all true? After JWST was launched, glitches already happened numerous times, and many people on Earth believe that this is due to some higher civilization out there that doesn't want JWST to reveal their presence. If you are still here, Stay tuned till the end of the video because we will be revealing more mysteries. And if you like our content, please subscribe to our channel. It will help us a long way. While in MRS mode, MIRI doesn't capture images. Instead, it records light spectra, which are basically light absorption fingerprints that show the chemical makeup of the objects being examined. During the MRS outage, MIRI's other three observing modes, imaging, coronagraphic imaging, and low-resolution spectroscopy, have continued as usual. The renowned Pillars of Creation were captured by the Super Cold Camera, which showed off its capabilities with a variety of striking photographs. This image displayed the delicate dusty formation in unsettling detail. Of all web sensors, Musk says, MIRI, which specializes in detecting mid-infrared wavelengths, needs the coldest temperatures to function well. The other three instruments, NERCAM, NERSPEC, and FGS NERIS, depend on the location of the telescope and its enormous sunshield to maintain temperatures of minus 369.5 degrees Fahrenheit, while MIRI needs additional cryo coolers to reach minus 447 degrees Fahrenheit. That's only 12 degrees Fahrenheit over absolute zero, which is the point at which atomic motion ceases to exist. Any additional heat would reduce the sensitivity of MIRI's observations because infrared light, which is essentially heat, is what the instrument measures. Saturn's polar regions will soon be observed by MIRI, Musk stated. So what is the real mission? A new paradigm for the study of alien worlds outside of our solar system could assist the JWST's search for alien life and planets that potentially host life. An analysis of the far-off planet TRAPPIST-1e, which resembles Earth, has allowed astronomers to create a framework that will aid them in figuring out whether worlds outside of our solar system would be suitable for human settlement or even support life. One of the seven planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system, TRAPPIST-1e, orbits an M-dwarf star that is 39 light-years away from Earth and is rather cold. The TRAPPIST-1 system has become the key target for the hunt for life elsewhere in the universe due to the fact that all of these extrasolar planets, also known as exoplanets, are believed to be rocky or terrestrial worlds that are comparable in size to Earth. The TRAPPIST-1e exoplanet, which is one of the most possibly habitable exoplanets ever discovered, will be the focus of close observation by the JWST during the course of the upcoming year. In this new study, a computer model was used to mimic the climate of TRAPPIST-1e, a planet that is roughly identical in size to Earth but has 40% less mass. The planet is situated in what is known as the habitable zone of its star, which has temperatures suitable for the existence of liquid water. The scientists next made a comparison between TRAPPIST-1e and Earth by examining how the simulated exoplanet's climate responds to increases in greenhouse gases, including the impact of carbon dioxide on extreme weather events and the rate of changes in weather. This is the first time in history that these two factors, which are essential for the survival of life on other planets, are being thoroughly researched. Hotchman and his co-workers found that the atmosphere of TRAPPIST-1e is much more vulnerable to greenhouse gases than the atmosphere of Earth. This implies that a rise in greenhouse gases in TRAPPIST-1e's atmosphere may result in more severe climate shifts than would be seen on Earth. The fact that TRAPPIST-1e is tidally locked to its star may account for this heightened sensitivity. As opposed to Earth, which rotates as it orbits the Sun, exoplanets have one side that is always facing the star, known as the day side, and this side is constantly exposed to radiation. Research into these circumstances may help scientists gain a better understanding of how Earth's atmosphere may evolve in the future," Musk added. In case, JWST and the team will be successful in proving that TRAPPIST-1e is habitable. The next big concern will be how to transport humans to that alien planet. It is worth noting that SpaceX CEO Elon Musk's dream is for humans to be a spacefaring civilization using SpaceX's interplanetary transport system. Do you think this will happen in the next 10 years? Comment down below. 
So how scientists could tell the world if they find alien life? Let's get to the bottom of that next. As a result of significant developments in their field, astrobiologists are considering the best ways to communicate potential groundbreaking findings to the general public. Astrobiologists may be confident that their work will soon pay off, but they are less certain of how to share their accomplishment if and when it happens. Given their field's long-standing, troublesome history of bogus claims and false alarms, how should they go about telling the public that we are not alone in the universe? After all, they have been misled before, Musk explained. But it's undeniable that things are moving quite quickly. According to Musk, we are in a totally different circumstance than even 10 years ago. Research in a variety of domains, from studying caves on Earth to traveling to distant planets, is destined to bring us closer than ever to the discovery or ongoing denial of extraterrestrial life. It may be important to talk about sooner rather than later how to convey such a thing to the world, whether through a framework or another approach. And that ends today's episode. Do you believe that in the next decade we will be openly accepting aliens as part of our lives? Let us know in the comments below and which upcoming space missions you are most anticipating and what excites you about the universe. Please subscribe and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.